Welcome back to the Rock Your Retirement Show. I'm your host, Kathy Klein, and today we're talking once again with Fritz Gilbert. He came on our show last year after he retired, and we invited him back to tell us how it's been going. Fritz was on episode 198, so if you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it. It might be surprising to find out what's changed. But before we start, I wanted to tell you that Fritz is currently waiting in an empty restaurant. We're recording this episode during the coronavirus pandemic. If you are someone who uses hotspots to access your files, I recommend using a VPN. The one lesson I have been using for years is NordVPN. Get it now and support the show by going to rockyourretirement.com slash VPN. That's V like virtual, P like private, N like network. Okay, I won't make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and bring on Fritz Gilbert. Fritz, thank you so much for coming back. How's retirement going? Hey, Kathy, great to see you. Thanks so much for having me on your show. And I tell you what, in spite of all the COVID chaos that's going on, retirement is uh, exceeding our wildest expectations. We're really enjoying it. and it's, it's great to be back to talk with you about it. Yeah, it's crazy that all of this is going on right now. Um, you know, we we usually, as you know, record the episodes way in advance. But now I, I kind of like to record in a more timely basis. Yeah, things are changing so fast. You know, it's amazing. You look at the the hot spots and how they pop up and move around and, you know, it's it's a scary, scary time. So I think, you know, all we can do is isolate to the best of our ability. You know, my wife and I have been staying home since the middle of March. We're recording this, uh, obviously, you know, the very, very tail end of March. And uh, we've been home for two weeks. I had a little bit of a cough and it kind of concerned me. So we, we self-quarantined and uh, it's been two weeks now. And a buddy of mine owns this restaurant. It's closed, obviously. So he said, yeah, if you want to come in and use the back room for your podcast, we, we don't have high speed internet in our cabin. So it makes a little bit of a uh, complexity but you know he was kind enough to open up the back door and I, I just came in and sat down at a little table here and I told him I'll wipe it all down before I leave you know you got to do what you got to do but it's it's time to be careful that's true and you know I went on a cruise with my husband from March Ooh. 6th through the 15th it was the last wow. cruise that celebrity had with our ship and as we are talking the ship is with all of the crew about 1100 crew members is in the middle of the ocean just wow. just chilling wow. and they knew that that was going to happen when they you know before they let us off they said that that was going to happen they were canceling all the remaining cruises and this particular ship was going to be waiting of course all of the cruise lines now are are closed i hope they recover yeah but um so we self quarantined because of that because we had been on a ship um celebrity was great by the way they you know, they took our temperatures before we got on board. When we when we got off the ship, our temperatures were not taken. Oh, really? No. Wow. And we were concerned when we got off that we felt safer on the ship yeah. than when we got back to the United States. Yeah. Well, I, I can't imagine a worse nightmare, though, than I hear those horror stories of the people that got stuck. You know, the people all save a little bit of money, get a cabin without a window, and then you get locked up in there for weeks. I mean, I can't not imagine. I mean, you know, it's 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 pretty it's pretty comfortable being self-quarantined. You know, our life in retirement right now, you know, we're, we're active. We do things with friends. We go to the gym. Obviously, all that stuff has stopped. But, you know, we can walk. We have woods behind our house with a nice hiking trail. We can take our dogs out every day. We're outside enjoying the fresh air. You know, it's a pretty comfortable situation you know, all things considered, but there, there are some people and not to mention, obviously the medical professionals that are dealing with it, the people in the hospitals, you know, things could always be so much worse. So we, we do have to count our blessings, but I'm glad you made it off the ship. Okay. Well, I believe we have a mutual acquaintance that has COVID-19. Really? Do, do you know, uh, do you know Paula Pant from a Ford? Yeah, I just saw that on Twitter yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. She, it sounds like hers has been really bad. She's had 103 fever for a week and she said yeah. it felt like a load of sand got dumped on her or some, she used some description like that. That was pretty, you know, you could, you could visualize how, how, how much agony she's been in. So yeah, I was, uh, I was sorry to hear that for her. Yeah. And how old is she? Like uh, She's probably early thirties, I guess. That's what I was thinking. She, so, yeah. and I don't know if you know this, but she had been part of the big 
flatten the curve movement okay before yeah. she was diagnosed she wow. she started self self isolating 9 days before she got sick wow and so imagine how many people she saved by staying at home yep yep and so that's right. yeah that's what lesson i did and you know my mom was here watching our dogs while we were gone and then i was counting the days cuz like okay so now mom's going to have to be quarantined because we just got back yeah and now she insisted on going home you know she's an adult grown woman i can't talk her out of the decisions that she makes so she went home and now she'll be self quarantined again for another oh, 2 weeks man you know it's it is what it is that we have to stop this we have to stop the spread of this hor- horrible disease and hopefully, yeah. and you know, in time, in time, it will pass, and life will return to normal, and we'll look back at it, and hopefully, we learn some things. You know, to me, it's kind of an interesting time to be introspective and slow down. And my wife and I have actually said, you know, in a way, it's kind of nice to get a forced purge on your calendar and exactly. and just force yourself into taking some downtime and relaxing. And 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 there there's some positives. You know, if I'm always a glass half full type of guy and obviously it's horrendous for the people that are going through the health issues and obviously the people that are dying. But, you know, so I, this isn't to be callous towards them, but I think in every situation, even this, you know, you can always look for the bright side and that's, that's what I always try to do. And there are some positives to this. It'll be interesting to see a year or two years from now, you know, what kind of impact this has on our culture, you know, globally, because it, it is that big of an event. So uh, time, time will tell, but you know, you can always look for the positives. I'm with you. This is this generation's version of 9-11. Yeah. And um, so I do believe that things will change. Um, One of the things that I've been doing is I've been getting back into my art. And so... I see some there behind you on the easel. I noticed that when 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 we first got on the the call. uh, What? Where? I'm looking right behind your head by the flowers. Oh, did you did you do that? No, I didn't. And and for those of you on the podcast, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Fritz, no, no. But I did color that. I colored on top of that. That what you're looking at is Pooh and Tigger and uh, I don't know what that little pink guy's name is, but Piglet. yeah, and Piglet from Winnie the Pooh. And so I have a. I like to collect boxes, and this is a box that had that on there, and I enhanced it. By oh, okay. making it, sorry, I'm turning away from the microphone. I don't know if I just ruined the audio, but um, so I enhanced it. But but I'm actually drawing right now pictures of a kingfisher. Um, oh, you put some of those on Facebook, I think. I saw those. Those are that was beautiful. Yes, thank I you. Can see that. Yeah. So I'm doing another one now where I'm actually showing all of my mistakes. So I'm doing it on my personal Facebook page. I'll probably share it to the Rocky Retirement Group as well. As well, um, in fact, I'll do that as soon as I get off. So, so those of you who are on the Facebook group can kind of see. But I'm drawing a separate kingfisher now, which is a bird, and I'm showing it sort of step by step with all of my mistakes because people think that they can't be artistic, and the the answer is yes, you can. Anybody can. It's yep. just with colored pencils, it's a matter of being patient because it takes hours and hours and hours. It's different than painting. It's different than drawing with pencil. But um, but so that's sort of my silver lining as I'm getting back into my art. It's helping me relax and mm-hmm. it's kind of meditative mm-hmm. to um, yeah. do those types of things. And we all need to get away from the news. So, so for the listener, this is not going to be a COVID-19 episode. This is really an episode where we're going to talk to Fritz about what's going on in his life. And COVID-19 is just one of those things that's happening right now. So thank you again for coming back on the show. I actually have some questions for you. And um, I know that when we first talked, one of the things that I really liked about your planning for retirement, and you had planned for what, two years? Yeah, I actually started my blog, The Retirement Manifesto, three years before I retired. And that, that's really when I started getting intentional. You know, the first year or so was probably focused on the financial side, but the last two years were very much focused on the purpose. I think our last discussion was really about how do you find purpose in retirement. So I would say the last two years before I retired, it was really focused on the, on the softer side, the purpose side of retirement. So yeah, pretty intentional process. 
Well, I love the the Wednesday box. I forget exactly yeah. what it's called. For the listener, I was panicking right before this episode because I lost all of my notes. So I'm doing this completely from memory. So hopefully Fritz will help me um, remember what I kind of wanted to ask. But Fritz, you had a Wednesday box that your wife sort of invented yep. where you were putting things into the box. And I had jokingly said you, you should put the kayak in every day. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, so tell me what happened with that. Are you still adding to it? Or are you pulling out or what, what's going on? Did it fizzle out or what's going on with the Wednesday yeah, box? Great, great memory. Um, yeah, we, we, we started a year before I retired and each of us were putting an activity in and we figured once we retired, that would give us two years of activities, half from my wife, half from myself. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest, we got so busy once I retired, we have come nowhere near pulling one activity out a week. So we're, we're not adding anything to it. Now, if we find something that we want to do, we just tend to go do it. And, you know, if we kind of hit a dry spell, which is rare. Um, we, I'll, I'll tell you some of the other stuff we've started doing, and, and we've been doing some really um, enjoyable, rewarding work. But um, as a result of that, and, and I think a lot of people find this, you know, you, you worry about being bored in retirement, but when you actually get there, you're very, very busy. And and we've gotten so busy now that, yeah, we still got the jar. It's sitting on our dresser in our bedroom. And every now and again, we say, hey, we need to pull something out. So, you know, we, we do occasionally pull things out, but it's nowhere near every week. So it's interesting how that was a, was a thought that we ended up really not needing at all. You know, retirement's been uh, busier than we expected. And, and, and we found some really rewarding things to do. And we haven't, that was kind of our backstop in the event we got bored and we've been anything but bored. So that, that's kind of the update on the uh, retirement activity jar. But do you think that creating that jar actually gave you a foundation of knowing some of the things that you wanted to do? Great point. I think it did two things. Number one, probably most importantly, it forced us to think for a year before retirement about the softer side of what are we going to do in retirement? And just going through that mental exercise of thinking of activities probably paid more benefits than anything else through the process. You know, that's number one. Number two was it made us aware, you know, you're constantly on the hunt for something to do in the area so you can add it to the jar. And, you know, inevitably we've done a lot of things that probably each of us put in the jar without actually pulling the, the, the paper out of the jar. And, you know, we just, we want to go, you know, there's a really neat old railroad uh, depot that has a, uh, a railroad club and they've built this entire replication of a local rail line and whatnot. So we just went there like last week, you know, two weeks ago, uh, right before the quarantine. So um, early March and, uh, and we went in and enjoyed it. And, you know, I remember specifically that was one of the activities I put in the jar. So I'm sure just thinking through and looking for things to do, it has led us to doing some activities that we wouldn't have been aware of. So yeah, there, there've been some tremendous benefits as a result of doing it. That's that's fantastic. Now, one of the things that you were talking about that you were just getting into, or your wife actually, is she was volunteering with a local shelter. But yep. now I believe, I don't know if she's still doing that, but I believe that her volunteer work has sort of morphed into something more. Do you want to tell the listener about that? Yeah, and this this leads into my book, and and this is one of the highlights from chapter five, which is kind of the the climax of the book. You know, how do you how do you go through the process of finding passion and purpose in retirement? And and I tell her story in the book. But yeah, basically, I'll just cut to the chase. People can read the book for the details. But she started a charity called Freedom for Fido, and what we do is we build fences for for no no charge, so it's totally free to low income people. You know, we live in kind of a bit of Appalachia. So there's a lot of low income people around here and a lot of dogs, you know, as we were volunteering for the animal rescue, one of the problems is there's so many dogs that run loose and, you know, that, that leads to a lot of the rescue work. So she said, you know, what can we do to help get to the core of the problem? Where you and don't need the rescue work. Exactly. So now we're building fences. We've got probably 50 volunteers in the community. We've had tremendous support financially. People love the idea and pretty much every weekend, quarantine and COVID-19 aside, every every other weekend that we're not in the middle of the self-isolation, we've been building fences. And uh, it's been absolutely rewarding. And, you know, she's got a website up. She set up the banking. She's got a board of directors. She's been making presentations around town. And she is absolutely on fire. This has become kind of her passion project. And it's just fantastic to watch her get excited about it. And, you know, I think the key is finding ways to give back to your community 
in a way that means something to you. And and this was her, this was absolutely that for her. So it's been very rewarding. So yeah, the, the rescue work has taken a whole new level and uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of her. You know, she started 501c3, she got it registered legally and, you know, she's got it all set up and, and it's really taken off. So I think the, the way I stated my book, it, nah, I shouldn't give it away. I'll give it away. Um, <laughs> she's got a tiger by the tail and the tiger starting to run. Oh, know? love it. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I love it. Now, you uh, were meeting people all over town. I think you joined Kiwanis. Did I get that right? Or was it a different one? I was thinking about joining Rotary. That's Rotary. Probably, yeah, there was a buddy of mine. I, I I ended up not doing that. Again, I think part of the balance in retirement is not getting overcommitted. And I was starting to feel a little bit of commitment pressure. I was doing a, a little bit too much and I was having starting to get a little bit of stress about keeping up on my blog and emails. And I was like, you know, that's crazy. This is entirely within my control. So I've kind of been intentional now on on being very selective about what I get engaged in and, and being more willing to say no. So that was one that I did say no to, even though I've got some good friends that are part of it. Great organization, obviously. Um, but, you know, I think we've got to be careful with our time and make sure we really, you know, get the most out of these precious few years that we have when we're financially independent and young and physically able to do the things we want to do. I don't want to get overcommitted. So Les and I did kind of the same thing when we moved to this 55 and older community where we live, which has over a hundred clubs, over a hundred groups. Yeah. Yeah. All kinds of things. We decided that we weren't going to, join every club that we we were going to hold off on joining until after we'd been here a year. Yeah. And now I did immediately join the art club because I knew that I wanted to get involved, but I wasn't taking classes. I wasn't, you know, I would, I would go to the meetings. I would vote. I would do all the things that I needed to do to, to be a good member. Yeah. But I wasn't doing a lot and we didn't join every club. Like some people will join 20, 30 clubs and then you're totally inundated. And I'm glad that I'm glad that that's what we did. And now we're adding some things in. We've, we joined a a club that has to do with the dogs and the dog park. There's a dog park in our community, which the dog club sort of helps maintain. And um, some other clubs too, that I can't think of on the top of my head. But, but yeah, it's good to hold off a little bit and not get overwhelmed. Now, some people have the opposite. They, they don't do enough and they're lonely after retirement. So did that happen to you at all? Did you, you had kind of a high power job. Did you get into the depression that some people get into at all? Fortunately, I didn't, Kathy. And and, and I, I wrote an entire chapter in the book about exactly this. And it was basically the hidden challenges of retirement. And, you know, people don't talk about that side of it. I don't I don't think enough. And a lot of people are kind of surprised when it when it hits them. So I've done quite a bit of research on it. I've written quite a few articles on my on my blog. And I decided to include the chapter in the book because I do think it's important for people to do struggle with it. And what I found and I, and I think Ours is probably a good example of that. The most important thing you can do to minimize your chance of going through depression, loss of identity, you know, there's a lot of, it's, it's almost a grieving process for some people. And the, based on the research, the most important thing you can do is spend as much time as possible before you retire thinking about what you want your retirement lifestyle to be. And as strange as that sounds, that's been proven time and time again as being the most important thing. Fortunately for me, you know, writing my blog starting so many years before retirement, I really, really focused on that. And I, and where you see most people get into, into trouble on that, not, not all the time, but the highest probability is when somebody is kind of a high charging type A, you know, really pushing and they lose their job unexpectedly, very short notice, which some people are probably going through right now, you know, so it's, it's a relevant topic. When you haven't had any time to plan for retirement, you didn't really see it coming and all of a sudden you're retired. Those are typically, you know, the cases where people can can really go through a tough time. And, and I put some suggestions in the book on, on ways to help deal with that and some resources. And I really encourage people, if you're having a hard time, you know, know that you're not alone. Don't suffer in silence. You know, there's a lot of resources out there. People are dedicated to addressing exactly your situation and, and don't be too proud to, to, you know, reach out for help. Um, it's, it's not something you should suffer through. And, you know, I've seen very successful business people that 
end up having very difficult retirements. They fall into alcoholism, you know, a lot of the other problems. And I've seen a lot of them that have come out of it, you know, and, they, and they've done okay. So it is a transition. And just remember that you've got years and years ahead of you and, and fight through your current battles because you've got some great years ahead of you. You just need to get there first. Right. And visualize. You know, I was reading a book and it talked about Michael Phelps and how I think he started when he was seven years old, he uh, swimming. And one of the things his coach did was helped him visualize what he was going to do if it's, I don't know, I, I didn't even know this until I read the book, but when he won the Olympics, his goggles filled up with water. Did you know that? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. And so he was swimming without being able to see anything. Wow. And the reason why he was able to get through it was because he had visualized, what am I going to do if my goggles fill up with water? And his coach had made him swim in a completely dark pool. Wow. And so he had visualized what he was going to do. And so I love the fact that you're saying we need to visualize what we're going to do. We need to figure it out, write it down, think about it, not just all of a sudden we're retired and, you know, we work on our to-do list for a month and then, okay, now what? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and that can... I, that can hold you over for a while, the to-do list type of an approach, but that's not where you're going to find the real rewarding and, and satisfying retirement. You know, retirement is such a rare opportunity to do something for the first time in your life since you were, you know, in kindergarten, probably. You've always had people telling you what to do. You've always had to do what you've had to do for the paycheck. Now that's all behind us, you know, and what a golden opportunity to do something for non-financial reasons, just because it's something that you're passionate about. And yeah, it's kind of hard to figure those things out. Passion is one of those kind of nebulous words, purpose. But the people that are really successful, like my wife with, you know, Freedom for FIDO, those are the those are the, the stories that I think, you know, we should strive to replicate because that really is living a successful retirement. That's rocking your retirement. I love you know, it. And, and, and that's how you get there is finding those things that mean something to you and, and dedicating your energy into that. But giving it enough time to figure it out if it's really something not quitting when you first start, just like um, Les and I have been taking dance lessons. And the first time you start learning how to dance, it's hard, especially for men, yep. because most men do not spend their time in aerobics classes. And a lot of women don't either. I mean, I don't, but we tend to, if you have a group of 10 men and a group of 10 women, and you tell the women now do a grapevine, I would bet you a dollar that more women are going to know what that even means than the men. So, so what we found is that if we give it some time to where you can actually learn if that is something that you want to do, mm -hmm. it's better than just going to three lessons and saying, oh, I can't figure it out. I, I'm going to quit. You know, I think you're right, Kathy. You definitely have to give it long enough to get over the learning curve of something. At the same time, though, I think it's important to recognize that if you're not really falling in love with something, don't be afraid to discontinue it and pursue something else, right? There's that balance between trying enough new things that you're, that you're really finding something you love and also making time you know, by discarding the things that you don't love to keep searching for that one or two thing that really give you that passion and purpose in retirement. So what do you, what would you say that your passion and purpose has been? Is it, is it your blog or is it something else? Um, I would say it's, there, I've got multiple, you know, my wife and I took a, a wonderful cross country trip last year. We, we took our RV all the way out to Seattle to see our daughter. We live in Georgia. So we took three months. We took a month going out. We stayed out there for a month and we took a month coming back. So travel, hiking, you know, being outdoors, seeing the country, that's definitely something. And, and, you know, that comes to, I think to a lot of people first of mind, oh, we want to travel in retirement. So that's kind of an obvious one, but we really have enjoyed, you know, having the RV and doing travel. I think the reality of it, though, is you're only going to travel a certain amount of time. And while that's rewarding in its own right, I don't I don't think it's sufficient to, you know, to really give you the, the true purpose in retirement. I think you have to find ways that you're contributing to society and, and, and you can feel that you're making an impact. And to me, that that most definitely comes through in my writing, you know, the 
probably the thing I enjoy the most is when I get emails uh, from readers and they talk about a specific article. The, the bucket strategy is an example, you know, with the, with the current market situation and the downturn that we took here, you know, with the COVID. Um, I've had a lot of readers reach out and say, you know, I'm so glad that I took your advice on the bucket strategy and I've got three years of cash and I'm sleeping well at night and, and this really isn't concerning me as much as it would have been. Those types of things, Kath, where you where you get the positive feedback from listeners and you really know you're making a difference, that's that's one of my real passions in retirement. And fortunately, the book fell into that. You know, it, it, it's the same type of um, passion, but in a really different format. You know, writing a book is very different than writing a blog post. And I, and I enjoyed it, you know, entirely. Um, very different process. But it was that same rewarding feeling of having thoughts and trying to find creative ways to put them down where other people can, you know, digest what you're thinking and apply it in their own lives. To me, that's that's probably my biggest passion right now in retirement. You know, I do want to talk about the book, but before we go there, I have to ask you about your RV. Okay. When you were on the show the first time, we talked about an organization where you can go to work. Yep. And it's it's on the tip of my tongue. It was in my notes. And I was work, just... Work camping. Work campers. Th- there was the other one, too. The one that was um, work camping, and there was another one. Yeah, there was another one. What was it? Um, they've been on my show, but, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I remember when they were, they were on your show a week before I was, I think, as a matter of fact, when we <laughs> talked to you like, Oh, I just talked to those people. Yeah. Right. And so I was just wondering if you had done any of that, did you, did you go and work part time and travel or was it just all purely for fun? Great memory and great question. Um, what we found really, we have four dogs. So, you know, the dogs make it, uh, significantly more challenging. And so this was our first big cross country trip. You know, we've talked about maybe working in national parks and things like that. Um, realistically, while we still have the four dogs, it's just not practical to do that. It's much easier to travel. You know, we we have a very relaxed schedule, two to 300 miles, stop for a couple of days, you know, walk the dogs every morning and every afternoon, even when we're traveling. And um, I think because of that, we just decided to focus on enjoying the travel without trying to tie some of the work camping, you know, around it but certainly a viable option. And, and I think it might be something we do in the future. You know, maybe when we get down to one or two dogs, we'll see it. It's not something we've ruled out, but it's not something we've done yet either. Mm. Well, thank you for updating us. We have dogs too. We don't have four, but you know, traveling with dogs does make it a little bit different than traveling without them. Indeed. So let's talk about your book. I thank you for sending me the advanced copy. I read it. I loved it hit some of the high points of the book and then we'll talk about where where people can buy it. Sure. So it, it's the, the book's keys to a successful retirement, um, staying happy, active and productive in your retired years. And really, Kathy, what this was, was it was an opportunity for me to look back. It, I would say the target audience or people that should be maybe interested in this book would be anybody either five years up to retirement or five years after retirement. And, and the reason I say that is if you look at my journey and, and when I've been doing this blog, I started three years before I retired and I you know, was very intentional in that process. And I'm now two years after retirement. Right. So I've gone through that planning stage. I've gone through the actual transition into retirement. And now, you know, retirement evolves. You go through different phases and I'm getting into that longer term, more mature phase of retirement where things have kind of it's now your life and you, and you've settled in and, and acknowledged that. So to me, that's really what this book is. It's, it's, it's how to walk through that period in your life and how to do it right. And, and basically what I've done is I've, I've woven in, you know, everything I've learned over the last five years into, you know, 24 keys that are outlined in the book of, you know, different things that you can do to increase your chances of having a truly successful retirement. And, you know, I'll say, I I know you don't focus much on the financial side and, and, you know, I probably right now, you know, much less than half of my content is on the financial side. There's only one chapter in this book that focuses on the finances. The whole rest of it is really focused on the softer side because that really is the important side of, you know, finding a successful retirement. Well, if you have your finances set, so that you can 
retire without going into poverty, then, then yes, but the finances are the basis. If you're not financially able to retire, then none of the softer side, it's not going to help you as much. Absolutely. I, 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 the way I look at it, Kathy, is I look at the financial side as being kind of necessary, but not sufficient. You know, if you only focus on the financial side and you don't take time to think about the broader purpose of what you're going to do with your life in this rare opportunity where you can do anything you want, um, you're missing you're missing the big key, right? But yeah, I agree. You, I, I really feel for you know the many, many, many baby boomers who are totally unprepared financially. That's a different question than really what this book book is focused on. This book is primarily focused on people that kind of have the financial side figured out. Maybe they don't know how to structure it. You know, moving from accumulating assets to starting to withdraw assets. That's a big mental shift. I talk about that in the book. So, you know, I, I do talk about transitioning with your money, but I don't. And I, and I talk about how do you determine if you have enough money? You know, so there is a focus on that side of it. But beyond that, the primary focus of this book is really how do you how do you get through those challenges we talked about earlier? And how do you go about finding these things that really give you a sense of purpose? Well, it was a great book. I do highly recommend that the, the listener read it. And yeah, and I think the majority of, of our listeners are actually in that situation. I think most of them are already financially aware, or they probably wouldn't be listening to this show. And they're they're looking at what else is there besides money. So thank you for writing this book. How can the listener find it? Where is it? And then we'll also, of course, put links to it in the show notes. Yeah, great. Thanks, Kathy. And I appreciate you helping to promote the book. You know, it comes out May 5th and uh, it's really been exciting to work with the publisher. So, you know, you can find it on Amazon. Just look up my name, Fritz Gilbert on Amazon. It'll pop up. You can go to my uh, my blog, The Retirement Manifesto, and there's a tab there called My Book, and it's got ordering information there. So it um, doesn't really matter to me where you order it. Just take a look at it. I think, uh, you know, my hope is that a lot of people will benefit as a result, and, and that's really my purpose behind writing it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming back on the show. And um, is there anything, any last thoughts you want to leave the listener with before we say goodbye? I guess... When you asked that, it just popped on top of my head. We talked earlier about how even in the midst of the COVID-19, you know, there's always something positive to, to look for. You know, I, I think to me, one of the critical elements of having a great retirement is just being intentional and choosing the right mindset. And, you know, we can choose to be positive. We can choose to be negative. But it really is, for the most part, a conscious decision we can all make. So, you know, choose to be positive. Look, look at the bright side of things. Look at look at things as opportunities rather than as negatives. And and, you know, try to find the best in life because, uh, you know, we, we've only got a certain number of days here on Earth. And it's in your best interest to enjoy them as much as you can. And I think a lot of that's within our control. Great. Excellent advice. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. This has been a great talk. Well, thank you, Kathy. And I love being on your show again. Thanks so much for the invite. I really enjoy talking with you. We should do it again. I'm up for that. You you say the time. We'll, We'll join you again. Sounds good. And for the listener, we'll see you next time on Rock Your Retirement. Bye.